Yo, yo, welcome to Trippy Commentaries and our coverage of the fantasy football season going into the 2014 NFL season. And we have a slew of very impressive rookies. This could be the year of the rookie. We already knew that there was going to be a lot of talented wide receivers, but now all of a sudden a lot of these running backs look like they're in positions to definitely make some waves. We already know about the quarterbacks, and there's also some good defenders that we'll get to at another time. I'm RJ, joined up with Justin. Hey, what's up, everybody? And K-Mac. What's going on, RJ? I think this is kind of the return of the rookies. Um, mm -hmm. We saw two years ago we had the huge you know, draft with RG3, a um, ton of other players we can talk about. Oh, yeah. And then the next season, it kind of fell off a little bit. That draft, we are kind of like, there's some good position players, but there's no, like, superstars. Come back this year, we got some superstars. So let's, uh, let's break this down. Absolutely. We'll, of course, start at 10 and go all the way down to the number one rookie we have rated. Mostly from a fantasy perspective, uh, it, it's really hard to say these players are going to be this value right off the bat because a lot of cases they have to wait for the guy in front of them to get injured or inevitably benched. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is our top 10 guys. Let's start off, of course, number 10 with Devontae Freeman, running back, Atlanta Falcons. We have Steven Jackson here. He's already sidelined with a hamstring injury. Surprise. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. Hamstring injuries are ugly. Not yeah. good. And they still have Jock Quiz Rogers, but he's in a prime position. He's looked impressive. Yeah. Kyle, I'm thinking this guy's going to be the starter sooner rather than later. Oh, he's a good running back. Well, we saw him last year at Florida State National Championship team. Uh, he was a big part in that game. Um, I think he is going to be the starter, but it's going to take a little while for him to jump up. Uh, they even started using Anton Smith over him, um, So, but he's he's looking great, man. I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. He's got 20 carries, 92 yards. That's a good, that's a good average, almost five you know yards per carry there. So, yeah. like what I see, and he's got reception yards. He's got like 100 yards receiving already. So that's that's mm -hmm. pretty good, and yeah, that's pretty good for Atlanta. Yeah, of course he was a big part of the FSU championship team there. And he wasn't one of those guys that a lot of people were talking about heading into the draft, but he just fits very nicely there in Atlanta. We know their other running backs are not that impressive. Perhaps Jacquez Rogers impresses. Yeah. But uh, once again, I think Devontae Freeman's going to be the starter there here pretty soon, perhaps as early as game one, because I noticed the last preseason game, they barely used him. And when they did, it was, was, it was with the, the first team starters. Yeah. We'll see what that means. Yep. Might want to pick him up on your fantasy team extremely late. Number nine, Austin Safarian Jenkins for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now they have Brandon Myers, uh, Luke Stocker, guy not really too many people know about. It's had a pretty good training camp, looks pretty big, but he's mostly a blocker. Yep. What do yeah. you think about Austin Safarian Jenkins heading into the season, Justin? Uh, he's looking really good. The Bucks, for the longest time, they've been looking for a playmaker tight end. Uh, yeah. I thought Tim Wright was that guy. Yeah. They ended up trading him for Logan Mankins. Mm -hmm. Big but trade. Uh, ASJ is what we're probably going to start calling him here on the channel. <laughs> yes. Um, he's primed for a big year. You know, he's going to be playing with Mike Evans and Vincent Jackson. So you got three guys that are all like six five. They're monsters. They're going to be overpowering yep. defensive backs. So. Especially in the red zone, I could see him having some. Uh, he'll definitely, he'll definitely yeah. having some red, red zone opportunities. And this guy's yep. a beast, man. I got to check him out uh, last week when they played Miami. I'm like, damn, this guy is huge. He runs like he's a wide receiver. Once he gets the playbook down, I know he's, he's kind of struggling with a little bit because he had to graduate later, so he missed some time yeah. early that he could have been learning the playbook. Once he gets that going, man. I mean, and Brandon Myers is a good tight end as well, but I think this is their guy, and it's who they want to use. Yeah, and he also missed some time. He had foot surgery, I believe, earlier in the year. And, yeah, after the uh, college season. So he did not, he did miss a portion of uh, training camp. He, you know, but as you said, he's a little behind on on the book work. And once he gets caught up a couple games into the season, we can start seeing him more in the offense. Yeah, yeah, definitely can't wait for the season to begin and oh, yeah. uh, see the splash plays that this guy's no doubt going to put out there. Yeah. <laughs> People are going to be talking about him pretty soon. Uh, our number eight guy, Carlos Hyde for the San Francisco 49ers. Frank Gore is the mm. starter there, but this is certainly the incumbent. Yep. Uh, he got plenty of action here in the preseason. Uh, the latest game, he rushed for uh, 38 yards on six carries. 
it's only a matter of time before he takes over. Now, it might not be this season. In the end of the run here, it could be next year where we come in as him as the starter. If Frank Gore stays healthy, but he's been a player who's been around for a long time, it would surprise nobody if Carlo, Carlos Hyde takes over that starting job. Yeah. Um, the, the offense is going to have to do some things this year. Their defense is losing some key players left and right. Yeah. Carlos Hyde, would you take him on your team, Kyle? Uh, it'd be tough for me. I mean, I do like him. I like his skill, and I like if Frank Gore goes down. But that's saying if Frank Gore goes down. I mean, what's leading us to believe that he's going to get injured versus any other running back? Because last three seasons, he's been very consistent. If you had him yeah. as a number two or number three, last two, three seasons, you, you had good, you know, good fantasy points off him. So... My thing, Carlos Hyde, he's going to have to score touchdowns. Maybe that's what they start using him as, kind of a goal line guy. He's kind of like Frank Gore, and they're really comparable running backs. Right. Great for San Francisco, though, because if Frank Gore goes down, Hyde's fantasy value is going to shoot. Big time. It's fucking skyrocketing. I think his value is already high. He, when I saw him playing for Ohio State, I thought he looked like a pro running back yep. in college. He was trucking dudes over. Oh, so yeah. mm -hmm. come And I think the way they're going to use him, Harbaugh will use him. You know he'll he'll be the relief back for Gore, but they're gonna want to save Gore because they yep. feel like they have a playoff run in him again. Another so committee gonna, situation. It's gonna man. be a committee situation. So yeah. you don't know who's getting those touchdowns on the goal line. You hope out of respect they give it to Frank Gore, but right. that never happens in football. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. Number seven, Jordan Matthews, wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. Jeremy Macklin and Riley Cooper are ahead of him on the depth chart, but let's be honest, Jeremy Macklin is no. Uh, he, he's he's no uh, he's very risky. Yeah, he he's no figure of health here. No. That's for sure. No, I think we expect Jeremy Macklin to go down at some point. He's no stranger to the bench uh, when it comes to being sidelined. This is Jordan Matthews' opportunity. We've seen him do great things in college. He fits perfectly in the system. I definitely think he's going to step up once he is put in that position. Another player who looked really good in the preseason. Now, number six, Bishop Sankey, running back for the Tennessee Titans. Main guy he's got to compete with there, Sean Green. This is a player with some uh, pretty big history problems as of late. Yeah, for injury, yeah. Bishop Sankey looks pretty good. His last game, he was impressive. Yeah. Kyle, one thing we always worry about when it comes to rookie running backs, fumbles. Yeah, and he's had some issues with it. Um, it's been reported that he's been running a lot of laps from the field, and apparently that's the punishment <laughs> for fumbling. So um, he did fumble uh, last preseason game, which was a turnover, and that's not good. That's I don't care who you are. You're mm -hmm. the best running back in the world. You could be Jamal Charles. You start fumbling. Coaches will take you out because they can't. you can't have turnovers. So, um, But just his skill alone and that he's pretty much going to be the number one running back definitely puts him in this caliber. I'm not really worried about it. I think he's going to get over it. Somebody's going to teach him how to hold the ball right. Exactly. Um, you know, Just like Tiki Barber was. Uh, he came in the league holding the ball wrong and he's fumbling. Changes it and never fumbles. Yeah, so. you never know. There's there's a difference with the size of the ball. And definitely. some guys, you know, maybe they just can't uh, grasp it uh, as easily. They don't right keep away. it high and tight. Exactly. High yeah. and tight. Yep. Moving on to our number five guy, perhaps some people might have thought this guy would fall in at number one, but he falls in at number five for us. Speaking of former Clemson superstar, Sammy Watkins. Here's the problem, guys. His quarterback is looking dreadful. He might be the worst quarterback in the entire league this year. I agree. And on top of that, Watkins seems to be dealing with some Injury issues here. I don't really trust him from a fantasy perspective, but he's a guy that can catch the ball two yards out and pretty much take it the distance of the field. Because yeah. of that, he will shine in in some moments in the 2014 season. I think he's going to be. I think he's going to excel. I think he's got the skill to to definitely be kind of quarterback proof. Uh, but EJ Manuel is really bad. I've been saying this since he was in college. He blew a lot of games for Florida State. Yep. Uh, I know Florida State fans feel the same way about him. I just I can't believe the Bills going to season wanting him to be their number one guy. I mean, you know, you got a guy like Ryan Mallett in New England who they're pretty much dropping to the number three. Yeah, make a trade, get make a guy, a trade, do something, on. do something to help out your you know your rookie receiver because he's that good. We've seen him in college just dominate. Usually receivers that dominate that much in college they come in the league. AJ Green, we saw it. You know, it's 
We've seen a lot of guys that have done it. So there's also a couple guys ahead of him on the depth chart. Mike Williams from Tampa, you know, formerly of Tampa Bay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Robert Woods is there, so you know they're fighting for position on the depth chart. Yep. And the quarterback. If you don't have a good quarterback, there's really to me no chance of success in the modern NFL. Big problems there. And he's got some rib issue too going on right I'm now. I'm glad you mentioned Robert Woods. I felt like he was a little bit forgotten when Sammy Watkins was drafted. This is yeah. still a guy who can improve and still be a playmaker for oh, yeah. that team. Uh, moving on to number four, my number one rated running back heading into the draft, Jeremy Hill. He ends up in one of the, of course, the Cincinnati Bengals with one of the best offensive lines in the league. Teamed up with Giovanni Bernard, so he'll have plenty of rest. He'll, he'll come in there nice and fresh. He has looked ridiculous as of late. Uh, the last uh, preseason game, he completely went off, yeah. which shows he is going to be a great player. Giovanni Bernard and him could be could combine to create thunder and lightning. Yeah, bringing it back, man. I mean, that's kind of the ideal situation in offense. You want to have that option. You want to have the guy who's going to pound it out on the goal line, which is why this guy is getting so highly, you know, he's up way up on our list here is because of that option. And Bernard's obviously going to make big plays, but this could tie into to Bernard's stock going down a little bit because this guy is probably going to get the goal line carries. But interesting note is Could last year, you think that Giovanni Bernard wasn't getting goal line carries. He actually did. He had a lot of carries within the five-yard line. He had like six touchdowns within the five-yard line. So that's big for him. And um, so he might, they might like him. So Oh, they do like him. It's tough to say, but I mean, Jeremy Hill is, like you said, he's probably the best. I thought as well, I was agreeing with you about, you know. Heading into the coming draft. Coming into the draft, I thought he was the best running back. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, this is... This is a good spot. If you guys can pick him up, I'd say do it. Yeah, Justin, we watch a lot of SEC football when it comes to college, and we saw Jeremy Hill run wild. The fact that he looks so good against these solid SEC defenses definitely looks good for his his, uh, NFL career. Oh, any player from the SEC, you know, ha- kind of has an extra step up on the competition going into the NFL. They, you know, they're playing harder competition week in and week out. Uh, Jeremy Hill with that tandem, on, I mean, it's going to be amazing. Uh, Bernard, they, they, by the way, they released uh, the law firm. Law firm, yep. So yes. that's going to open up even more opportunities. We were wondering if he was gonna, even going to be around, mm-hmm. fighting some injuries. So they had to let him go. I mean, I think you know he'll probably land with another team, but. Having Bernard and Hill as a one-two punch, yep. Hill's more of a between the between the guard and the tackle kind of runner. Exactly. Then you got Bernard on the outside doing a lot of uh, receiving in the in the passing game. And that's the thing: if Bernard can get the receptions, then he still pretty much draft him where you're where you're playing now and draft him at pretty yeah. high. I would definitely take him in the second round. I think he's going to be that good this year, but. He's going to get the receiving yards. So even if he doesn't get some of those rushing touchdowns, he's probably going to make up for it in the air. Yeah, definitely one thing I like is that both these guys are very young. Bernard the rookie last year, Hill the rookie this year. Definitely sets up nicely for Cincinnati. And AJ Green. Number three, yeah, Kelvin yeah. Benjamin oh, yeah. for the Carolina Panthers. Oh, yeah. Kyle, he's pretty much all the Panthers got right now. Besides Greg Olson, their tight end, Kelvin Benjamin is it. Well, in the, our mock drafts we've been doing lately, I've been noticing Calvin, uh, Kelvin Johnson falling so Kelvin low. Kelvin Benjamin. Our, Kelvin Benjamin going so low. And it's crazy because, I mean, this guy is going to be the featured receiver there. He's pretty much the only guy that that they have that's going to be able to produce. Yeah. He's big. He's tall. Saw him pretty much win you know, the national championship for Florida State, come with a huge catch. I mean, um, this guy's got skill. And the thing is, him and Cam Newton are... Pretty much like best buds right now. They're connecting well. What have you heard about that? What's that? The the Cam Newton Kelvin Benjamin connection. The chemistry. Oh, they've been they've been they said on and off the field. They're constantly around each other, joking around. They get along really well. Really. Um, yeah. So good to hear and there. He's getting a lot of targets. He's gonna get a lot of targets. He's big touchdowns. This guy here, if it's getting late round draft and you're still you know you're pretty much you're good on your running backs, backup running backs. Scoop this guy up. I mean, because. He's, I mean, his potential is, I don't know, out, this, out the freaking roof. Definitely got an NFL body. We'll see how Cam Newton's health goes because that's going to have a lot to do with it as well. Yeah. And uh, like we said, he's the number one guy in Carolina. It is early, but that championship kind of should give you a leg up, should put you in the right frame of mind heading into the NFL because you know what it takes to win. Yeah. Bottom line. Number two, 
Brandon Cooks. Mm. This is a guy that fell right in the Saints' lap. Drew Brees has got to be just salivating here with this guy because yeah. he doesn't have to worry. He can kind of be under the radar. He doesn't have to worry about being a huge threat that the Saints need to win the game. He's one of those guys who's just going to kind of fly under the radar. You're going to have Marcus Colston. Don't even have to mention Jimmy Graham. Brandon Cooks is going to be flying down the field. Drew Brees yeah. is going to be looking to him early and often, and it's not going to take long before he might be considered the Saints' number one guy. Here he is, Justin. What do you think about his prospects this year? Uh, he looked pretty damn awesome in college. Uh, he was he won the Belichick Award for best receiver. He was an All American. Yeah. Uh, the, the Saints traded up seven picks to get him because they knew they needed that other playmaker on that team. Oh, yeah. He's, he, you know, remember Lance Moore, how he would kind of be the guy that would just sneak out and burn everybody. I yep. could see Cooks being that guy considering you got the lanky dudes with Colston, Jimmy Graham. The one guy that is his competition for being that deep threat, Kenny Stills, He's, mm -hmm. He is battling injuries yeah, uh, in, in the preseason, yep. so that, that might open up the door here for Brandon Cooks. Yeah, yeah. This, this guy here is probably the best route runner out of all these receivers we've seen, and you got that quickness and that speed uh, with being able to know how to run routes, you know, find the holes, sit in them. I mean, this is another guy, like you said, who catch a two-yard pass and score a touchdown off it. He's that fast. This guy's going to be explosive, man. I was hoping, you know, that our favorite team, the Bucks, they're uh, – that they were, you know, gonna pick him. So yep. speaking of the Bucks, our number one guy, Mike Evans, wide receiver, of Beast course, mode. played for Texas A and M with Johnny Manziel. K Mac, I remember you constantly kind of questioned Johnny Manziel for as big as a fan as you were of him. I remember you always said, "Well, he does have that beast of a wide receiver." Yeah. He couldn't be stopped. There he is, you know, two guys trying to oh, cover him nice. against one of the best teams there, Auburn. Show my team getting, um, getting he, marked by Evans. He was unstoppable in college. Now yeah. starts his NFL career. Here's the good thing, guys. Josh McCown showed that not only can he be successful with a great wide receiver, he could be successful with two great wide receivers, maintain both of their fantasy values. He's got Vincent Jackson on one side. Big Mike Evans on the other. I'm thinking that this is going to be huge, yep. and it's going to be a blow-up situation for the young rookie, Mike Evans. No, it's going to be pretty awesome to watch this guy. I, I, you feel like some rookies don't have an impact until season two or three. Yeah. But Mike Evans, Brandon Cooks, some of these top receivers in this pretty damn awesome uh, 2014 draft. Yes. We're, we're going to see him catching some bombs. He's got breakaway speed for being how big he is. Plus, he's going to be able to just, you know, maneuver around guys. I mean, D-backs aren't going to be 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 mm -hmm. And they're not going to be able to catch up with him either. So. Nah, he's, he's your, almost your, your perfect wide receiver. He's tall, he's strong, he's fast, he runs routes. Uh, this, guy, this guy has potential to be definitely a number three, number two receiver. This could be like the Alshon Jeffrey of this year. He's going to get opportunities. Obviously, they got another good receiver, Vincent Jackson, so yep. he's going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups, and a, you better be a decent-sized cornerback because Josh McCown will put the ball where it needs to be, and uh, Evans will go up and get it. I mean, talk about touchdown value. This guy out of all these players, I feel, has the best touchdown value because he's going to score. Um, I got to check him out, like I said, in person against the Dolphins, and my God, like, I liked him already. I saw him on TV, but seeing him in person, the way he runs his routes, I mean, just the plays that you don't always notice, like him blocking and stuff, just lighting people up. Um, this is good. These, you know, these big receivers on the outside is going to help Doug Martin out. I definitely feel his value is, has gone up here recently with the addition of the offensive line. So maybe now the offensive line is good. Josh McCown is going to have a little more time. Throw to your big receivers, all right? Mm-hmm. We're extremely excited about the rookie class coming in this year. This is crazy. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention the rookie quarterbacks that look to make big waves this year. Blake Bortles, yep. Derek Carr looks good, Teddy Bridgewater we're big fans of. Yep. There's some guy playing for the Browns that might eventually do something. We'll see. We're definitely uh, really excited once again about this rookie class coming in this year, yep. especially from a fantasy perspective. They're going to go low. Make sure to grab the guys that you feel good about yourselves. You might want to use this list as a good measurement of where you should draft guys in comparison to the other rookies that are also going to go low. This guy, Bishop Sankey, I know some people have him ranked high, but he is a rookie. He's got plenty of talent ahead of him. Make sure to stay tuned 
here at Trippy Commentaries. We have plenty of fantasy coverage coming for you every Wednesday morning. You can catch our fantasy show. Yep. Uh, we'll produce that, of course, breaking down all of the biggest information you need to know heading into the the week's matchups, including the big Thursday matchup every week. We will also be covering our personal fantasy league. You guys will really enjoy that. Yeah. Starting off from our draft that we'll be doing this Sunday. So watch out for that. We'll upload the results and commentary on Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for staying tuned. Please subscribe if you are new to the channel. Stay trippy. We'll see you on the flip side. I'm RJ for Justin and KMAC. Peace out.